it just gets better and better and better, and it's so good to see each and every one of you here today. It's warmed my heart, especially. Um, live music is something else, and we shouldn't take it for granted. I'd like to bring to the bandstand at this time a brilliant young readist. You will certainly enjoy her this evening. How about it for Miss Roxy Koss? Roxy Koss on saxophones. <laughs> And our gentleman, our master of the 88s, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the great pedigree, but uh, the work that he's done in his own right, you will hear it right now for yourselves. Please welcome Mr. Jeffrey Kieser. Jeff Kieser on the piano. <laughs> Jeff Kieser, Waxy Cross.
Jeff Kieser, Roxy Koss, wow, wow. You know, in particular, uh, under your solo, Roxy, I heard the familiar friend, the blues, creeping in, making its presence known. And I want to ask both of you this question. What is it about the gift of the blues that keeps on giving, that keeps on motivating? What a question. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that's what this music is all about. I think that that's how it came to be. And it's at the root of, of what this music is and expression and uh, whatever you're feeling, everybody feels the blues every day. <laughs> so then you can come to the music and get it out and it turns into joy. So that's, that's from, from me. I like that, I like that. What about you, Sir Jeff? Uh, yeah, I mean, so all the music that I came up playing, um, the first professional experience I had playing with Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, playing with Ray Brown, playing later on with Christian McBride and people like Benny Golson and Art Farmer, the, the blues was always part of the language of the music they played. Um, and e even if we were doing some kind of occasionally neoclassical sounding stuff, there was always that element in there, and that's, I mean, that's just what makes black American music what it is. I mean, you can't, if you take the blues completely out, then it's, you've got something, you've got improvised music that can be very interesting to listen to, but it's not what we're doing. <laughs> I like that. You know what I mean? So, I'm, this is the music I came up playing, it's the music I learned from my dad, and the music I love, and hopefully I will be remembered as someone who, came to it authentically out of out from the coming from the right place you know not someone who appropriated or was inauthentic you know this is this is it this is how I express myself and I'm grateful to have had the apprenticeship and um, incredible experiences that I've had coming up and you know trying to give back now <laughs> that's right that's right 
you had me at Art Blakey. <laughs> and, I, and I've got to ask you, the only time that I talked to trumpeter Roy Hargrove was on a Facebook Live, and I got to ask a question. And I asked him about Miles, and he said, yeah, when we were like 18, Jeff Keezer and I, we were running around after Miles Davis in Europe somewhere. <laughs> but Jeff actually had the opportunity to either go with Miles or Art Blakey. Now, and I wanted to ask you, was that true? And then secondly, how did you choose Buhena? Yeah, well, I actually, I, I had joined Art Blakey's band. Um, and then two months later, Miles called. And at the time, um, playing in Art Blakey's band was my dream gig. It's, it was like that law of attraction thing before that was a thing. You know, I had a band that in high school that played Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers music. And when I went to the Berkeley College of Music, I joined the Art Blakey Ensemble there, led by Bill Pierce. And so when I got the actual gig, it was, you know, it, was, it felt completely natural. I couldn't imagine ever doing anything else. So that was really the gig that I wanted to have. And, and we were playing, I, I got to play on every tune. I got to solo on every tune. And, and the stuff is as incredible as it would have been to be on stage with Miles Davis. Um, you know, and I got to meet him a couple times and talk to him a little bit. And he, s he, he said one thing to me that's only gotten more profound as the years have gone on. He said he was trying to get me to join his band. He knew I was playing with Art Blakey, and he said, and I'm not going to imitate Miles' whispering <laughs> voice. I'm just going to say what he said. He said, Jeff, you need to play in my band because you need to be uncomfortable. He said, the only way you're going to grow as an artist is if you're uncomfortable. And I said, I thought, wow, you know but I really want to play with art right now. So, <laughs> you know, it really, I couldn't, you know, choose, but um, it was pretty cool getting to meet him. Well, Roy and I were roommates at I Berkeley. Oh yeah, we, oh had bunk, we had a room about the size of this piano <laughs> and bunk beds and, you know. <laughs> incredible, incredible, man. Jeff Keezer, give him another yeah. hand, give him another hand. <laughs> I have one more question for you as well, Roxy. Um, I was really knocked out. Uh, I found you through Jeremy Pelt's band and then started investigating your band. And you know, I think about the soprano and even the tenor, power, the power horn, and empowerment, what you're doing. And I want you, if you could, to tell us a little bit about an initiative and an organization that you've started for that purpose. Sure. Um, I assume you're referring to Women in Jazz Organization. I call it WeJo for short, um, which started back in July of 2017 and uh, was my own part of my own personal response to the presidential election in 2016 and the outcome there and just sort of a feeling culminating that I had uh, as a woman in jazz. <laughs> years in the making, but um, it's turned into something much bigger. Um, over 500 members, and we're, we're waiting now on our official 501c3 status, um, which will help us do a lot of the initiatives that we're dreaming of doing, but haven't had the resources to do. Um, but you can check out the website, wearewejo.org. We have a mentorship program. We've done some radio shows at WKCR, and uh, <laughs> and um, some, you know, we've done some jam sessions and concerts and we're, we're trying to do much more, but um, the, the mission is basically to help, try to help level the playing field in jazz in terms of gender issues so that women and non-binary musicians can help contribute and uh, hopefully lead to a more successful uh, art form in general because as we all know, we love jazz. We wanna see it continue to succeed, so. Thank you, Roxy. Thank you. Roxy Koss, Jeff Keezer, more music.
Thanks very much. I guess I should tell you what those songs were called. The first tune, these are new tunes, um, just recorded, album's not out yet. 
but uh, WBJO is going to be the first <laughs> place this record goes. Um, I hope. Anyway, um, it's going to go out there soon. The first tune was called Refuge, and it was written, it was actually an adaptation of a piano concerto, the first movement of a piano concerto that I wrote some years ago, but we changed it a little bit. And that last tune was called, uh, what are the initials? I-L-Y-B-D, which stands for I love you, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> uh, my beloved says to me sometimes <laughs> at home. This next song is called Honu, H-O-N-U, and it's the word in Hawaiian for turtle. So it refers to the Hawaiian sea turtles. So some of these, it's kind of picturesque and what's the word, programmatic sounding, but I uh, hope you enjoy this.
Roxy's got some great records out. Um, you've been checking checking them out. She's got one called "The Future Is Female," which is awesome. The whole record is super happening. We're gonna do a tune from that album. The title is "Females Are Strong as Hell." <laughs> That's right.
Jeff Kieser on piano. Jeff Kieser. Roxy Koss on saxophones. Roxy Koss. I'll ask you one more question. A lot of people learn different things during the quarantine season, you know? Is there one thing, musically or otherwise, that you're going to take with you as things get back to the new normal, let's call it? Roxy? What I'm trying to take with me, we'll see if it works, it's not working so far, is to s actually say no. Um, this idea of like, we can do it all. We, I, I don't want to do it all anymore. <laughs> I'd rather do things I want to do because then it gives you more to give to those things. So. Jeff, anything? Thank you, Rasu. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'm going to have to quote Yogi Berra, but it ain't over till it's over. Right. <laughs> so we're right. still in it. Um, however, you know, we're able to, we've learned how to sort of function in it. Um, I'd say to all my piano students, who, many who I taught over Zoom for a year, <laughs> uh, we've all become better solo piano players <laughs> because <laughs> of this. We're all just sitting at home by ourselves. Um, but I could say, for me, not going on the road for a year has it really forced me to and enabled me to focus on my family, on my you know, relationship with my wife and my son, our, our four-year-old son, and just be there every day. And as much as I love touring and I love playing around the world, I'm not in a hurry to go back to that life. You know, I'm kind of liking being home, getting some things done around the house slowly. But uh, it's just, it's just, it's been a real shift in my priorities, you know? And uh, can't wait to get back on the road, but it's, <laughs> it's not going to be the same long <laughs> tours like we used to do. Sure, sure. You know? Well, we're glad to have both of you here with us. Thank Jeff Kieser, Roxy Koss. We want to thank Bonnie here at Yamaha, of course, uh, John Newcott at WBGO. We want to acknowledge uh, our president as well and CEO, Steve Williams. We thank him, as well as our board chair, uh, Carl Frederick. And all of you, thank you so much for your continued support of uh, WBGO. If you guys could send us home with just one more, we would be appreciative. Thank you so much.
Thank you. 